Do you have something to say? Then you need to start a podcast today. Now, to do a podcast, what you're going to need is you're going to need a good hosting service. And the one I use and the one I recommend is Buzzsprout. Now, uh, Buzzsprout has a lot of features, but the, the best part about Buzzsprout is if you really just want to dip your toes in to starting a podcast, it's completely free. However, if you're really if you're willing to go all in and go full hog, go to uh, the bottom of my show notes here, use my link and start an account. So not only if you start an account using my link, not only will you have access to all of Buzzsprout's Buzzsprout's uh, features and everything like that, you will also receive a twenty dollar Amazon gift card as a special thank you for joining. Uh, after your what was it? Second month, you'll get it. Now, like I said, it has a lot of things. Uh, especially if you start an account using my link, you get indefinite hosting. So every episode that you put up is it's just there forever. They will keep it up for you. Uh, multiple platform support. So that means that Buzzsprout lets you link to uh, many, di- pretty much every podcasting platform, be it iTunes, Pandora, uh, TuneIn, and just a whole plethora of other ones. You obviously have to do the work yourself and submit, but, I mean, again, it's easy. It's just a click of a button and a little bit of downtime. Uh, let's see, what else do they have? Set, they have? They have a lot of choices for monetization, be it uh, affiliate programs, such as this one you're listening to right now actually, and also uh, many different, and links to different sponsors, and different sponsor services that you can join to, you know, try and get monetized that way, and the last, the big thing that they have is they also now offer uh, the Magic Mastering Service, which is, what that does is it automatically fixes the levels in your audio, so it'll kind of tune out, like, background buzzing noise, and if like one and if you have more than one person on your podcast, it'll try to uh, even out the volume between the two different people, especially if like one's louder than the other. It'll automatically do that. And then all you really have to do is choose your subscription level based on uh, how much content you think you're going to be putting out every month. You know, you can go be safe like I am and go high or, you know, you can go low, and if you go over the amount of time, it's just a little bit extra. Nothing big. Now, uh, unless you're a complete coding wizard, you know, uh, well, making the, making the content is, in a way, it's it's kind of, it's both the hard part and it's the easy part. Because obviously you got to have something good to say. But, or, well, no, you don't really. <laughs> but, unless you're a coding genius... You know, actually uploading a podcast somewhere is a massive pain in the ass. And really it's, well, not, not even so much that. It's just like, how, how, do, how do I do it, right? I tried, whenever I first started this podcast, I tried submitting to iTunes. And you go to the submission page, it's literally just a blank page and a field that says, what's your RSS feed? I don't know what the fucking RSS feed is. Buzzsprout, however, takes all that uncertainty away. Like I said, you just go to all the different platforms you want once you have some your stuff uploaded and submitted and just sit just hit submit. And you just have to copy and paste your or and it, it gives you an RSS feed. It makes it for you automatically so you have that. You can copy and paste that whenever you need to submit anywhere. And yeah, Buzzsprout makes everything easy. Buzzsprout is it is, I, I would say it's your, your number one resource for podcasting. So if you want to start your own podcast, go down to the show, go to the, the bottom of the show notes here, use my link, get your podcast up, get your, get, get your uh, Amazon gift card, and get your heart out there. Now, enjoy this show.
All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Paint Booth. Uh, so for this episode, you guys remember in my previous videos, I did a uh, custodies commissions for a friend of mine, and I actually just received some more stuff to do. Same, <clears throat> same buddy, uh, same uh, faction, actually. And so this time, I'm actually going to be working on the big bad Telamon Dreadnought. You see, yeah, there you go. See a little bit better. So this one, uh, this is actually the biggest Dreadnought that there is in Warhammer 40k. And uh, there's a few different ways to equip this guy, but this one has the uh, the fist with plasma flamers, which is also magnetized, and then the um, Shit, I don't remember what this is called. The Last Blaster. Something like that. Which is also detachable. Alternatively, you can also do... You can also give this guy two fists or two guns. And there's another gun that you can equip him with. And just to give you an idea how big this guy is, you'll remember the Alaris Terminators that I did in my previous video. Well, that's... That's how big they are. So, this thing's at least, like... Two and a half times the size of a regular custodis. So now, uh, for this project, we're obviously going to follow, you know, pretty much it's the same color scheme. And uh, I would actually argue that this one's going to be slightly easier because, well, I mean, yes, there is more surface. Okay, the the base is going to be a little bit more work, but that's just because it's uh a bigger surface area, whereas uh, the rest of the body is going to be, uh, I would say it's actually going to be easier because for the most part it's it's just going to be gold. And then there's, you know, a few details here and there, like the shoulders are going to be red, and then uh, like the joints and stuff all end up doing the, uh, the black and silver, and there's just a couple of weapons. And what what is actually going to make this easier, because, you know, he doesn't have the... Uh, like the top knot plumes like the Terminators had and he doesn't have a uh, a cape or anything like that so to start off with we're gonna go ahead and go over this entire model with our handy dandy Seraphim Sepia hold on a second All right, sorry about that. I had to pause. I thought I heard some loud noises. Or I did hear a loud noise. I just thought it was important. Anyway. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and go over the main body with Seraphim Sepia. And that's going to give us, uh, it's going to turn our gold into, you know, gold with character. And just to... Give you guys a little taste. Go over one of the toes real quick. And since it is a lot, we want to make sure we go over this nice and thick. Especially since uh, this color is, there's more red in it and is uh, is similar to the gold so you want to make sure that you get enough to fill in uh, some contrast in the cracks so you might be able to see you got a little bit in the toe there alright so now y'all are gonna watch me go ahead and cover up the rest of this thing
Oh, shit. So that was just the body. Actually, I also still have the rest of these pieces to do up. So. Sorry, I thought I was done with this. But either way, once I get this wash in, I'll go ahead and let it sit for a minute and dry. Oh, let's see, so gun arm's going to be easy because it's just these elbow plates. Sorry, I'm going to sneeze. <sighs> or not. Got out of it. Okay. It's one and two. And most of this gun is actually going to be uh, black and silver. Like I've been doing with the, uh, the other weapons that are part of this commission. And a lot of the main body is actually going to be black and silver as well. I'm sure you saw a lot of the stuff in the back here. Let's see, to make it easier, I'll just go ahead and attach the fist so that I'm not trying to hold on to something that's wet paint while I work. So once again, got elbow plates. While I'm doing this, I might as well point out that this is also a uh, Forge World model, which is kind of like a side company for Games Workshop, and they make their whole thing is to make, like, you know, big stuff that's rarer and more difficult to field. Although sometimes it's, uh, can be a pain in the ass occasionally as they don't always catch up with the rules as fast, but... You know, that's just the way things go. Okay. Getting there, we're getting there. Oh, and one of the good things about this thing being a forgeable model is it's it's a lot more poseable than a lot of the uh the plastic models that you'll see. there's more parts and usually they fit together well and it looks like this model in particular was a good fit all around so that's good Make me sick almost there Almost there. Almost there. Shit. I suppose I should have just gone back into a uh, fast mode, but yeah, whatever. Okay. So Sepia is done. Got a bit more of a uh, a burnished gold look going on. And this thing will ever focus. There we go. So, I'm going to sit that down, let that dry off for a while before we move on to the next parts. Alright, so Homeboy is dry. Now we're going to go ahead and go in and work on the, the red sections, which is, we'll start with the base of flat red. I don't know why I said it like that. Flat red. Once again, Vallejo. And then with some edging work with orange red. Now, the good thing, as I was saying before, this guy is quite a bit uh well he's gonna be easier to do because he doesn't have like you know plumes and 
all that stuff. But so what we're gonna do is these the main shoulders are gonna be red, and then the uh, the tips of the missiles here will also be red. And then last, I'm gonna go ahead and do his uh, his elbow red as well. So actually, I'll do that part. No, I'll do that part last. Okay, so, so I had to step away for a second, but as you can see, I got the uh, the base red color done, and uh, well, it's also a good thing because I realized that the elbow is not actually supposed to be red, as well. So I just went ahead and uh, uh, put the shading on that and made that the color that it's supposed to be, and I I, I also uh, shaded in a few details on the uh, the main cannon just because I realized. You know, there, there's got to be a little bit more variety, not just uh, not just all black and silver. But so now I will go ahead and do the dry brush work with our orange red. Let me. I should probably get prepared before I actually start popping off but yeah so just need a little bit and most of the detail that you're gonna see when I do this is gonna be around the edges of the shoulder tips of the missiles here because obviously flat surfaces are they really do that much with flat surfaces okay let's see what we see I need a little bit more than that And I also have to contend with the fact that since this color is very similar, it tends to wash out. So I got to make sure I get enough on the edges. It'll probably be more, and I, I'm just doing the uh, the backs of the shoulder pads right now. It'll probably be more visible whenever I get to the uh, the filigree on the front here. For now, and I do whenever I dry brush, even if it is a flat surface, I always do a little bit over the entire surface, just because there's always some small deformities or imperfections that will pick up a little bit of the paint. Oh, it's a little hard to see with the camera here, but. It is there. So let's go ahead and do the other back shoulder. And you guys also notice that I haven't done anything with the base yet because in this case, one of the nice things is that the colors that are used on the base are not at all used on the uh, the model itself. So, and usually when I'm working, I nor I normally like to do bases last, just with uh with this commission at least I've been doing them at the same time because especially the uh, the brown colors uh, cross over. 
between the base and the model. A little bit of edge work on the, the shoulders. Actually, the me. Let me make sure I grab the uh, the tips of the missiles before I forget. Just a little bit of brightness on these guys. There we go. All right, so red is done. And I went back in uh, off air and filled back in the, uh, the gold filigree on the front of the shoulders because, I mean, you got to have something there. Otherwise, it just looks weird. Uh, and now... Well, we're going to go ahead and do the annoying part, which is the bases. So, once again, like always, start off with a good old boy, chocolate brown, for the dirt. Actually, there. There's the label. Chocolate brown. And it does look like chocolate, like I've said before. And then we'll finish off the dirt and the, uh, the edge of the base with our, uh, where is it? English uniform, or uh, uniforme inglese, as it says in Italian, but, all right, here we go, chocolate brown. gentlemen is the dirt finished now well, I just I'll just go ahead and uh, do it in the same uh, clip we're gonna go ahead and move on to the rocks as always or well not as always because maybe I might have a different project that doesn't use rocks but as you know, we're using the same colors, uh, somber gray for the base color, followed by cold gray to do the majority of the uh, texture, and then once again our old pal stonewall gray for the light edges. Without further ado, just going to go ahead and get into it.
I got the base color of the rocks down. I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of a break from the time lapse. So, once again, that's the somber gray. So now, we'll get into the next colors that are not quite as uh, time intensive or area intensive, I guess. So, I'm saying so too much. Uh, next up, we got our cold gray. And as always, that is going to be where we're going to use that to, uh, you know, just add a little bit more contrast onto the, uh, the details of this rock. It's uh, nice and rough. So we're going to bring that out. And we're going to go ahead and do that now. That is the base done on this guy. I know the uh, it is a little bit hard to there, there. There's a little bit less detail just because this uh, big center rock is so flat. Uh, fortunately, there is there is a bit of roughness all along this whole thing. So I was able to if you if you look closely, there is some uh once that focuses yeah you can see you can see the ridges kind of along the rock and then of course the uh the brighter edges which I went over with the stonewall gray so it gets back into focus there we go looks like it's nice and uh dried out and sort of a uh, broken I guess would be the word I don't know but Anyways, once we come back, we'll get into, you know, some more stuff. Alright, so we have pretty much done, and by we, I mean me, <laughs> we've pretty much done all the, um, the real cosmetic and aesthetic portions of the big boy here and now really all that's left is the uh the internal mechanics and uh the coloration of the weapons so as with the rest of this commission that i've been doing what we're gonna do is we're gonna first go ahead and prime over all those parts with black so that's gonna be some of the stuff like uh the knee joints the hip joints and then a lot of this uh machinery in the back and a little bit a little bit around the head you can kind of see and then we're also going to do the same for the majority of the uh the last blaster here so like the barrels and uh all the um the ammo packs here and also and the fist because you can see there's a little bit of interior joints and then of course this big joint right here and uh, yeah, the the main finger knuckles and the plasma flamers. So, so as you know, the process with that is everything goes black first. Uh, for stuff like joints. Uh, yeah, for joints basically, and uh, some of the parts of the weapons, we're gonna dry brush silver. Some of them, your um, 
Miura, what was that? Wow. Uh, some of the more primary parts of the weapons are just going to be painted completely silver and then hit with the Nuln Oil to get some contrast in there. So, without further ado, I will go ahead and starting with the body, we'll get into this black stuff. I had to step away, uh, which is fine, because as you already know, whenever I'm doing the uh, painting on the black primer like this, I have to do a couple coats anyway. So I went ahead and did the the second coat off camera. Uh, so like I said, we did all the uh, like the machinery parts and the joints, and then of course the bits on the weapons. They're black for now. Uh, before we continue on, there is one little bit that I need to add on. Uh, as you may remember from my previous videos, 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 uh, all the Custodes guys have a bunch of different gems and stuff on their armor. Well, this guy, he's only got one. And it's... This big one here, right in the center of his crotch. So, we're going to go ahead and hit that with the heavy blue. Real quick. And just get that out of the way. So, you see he's got a nice big blue dot right in the middle of his, uh, right in the middle of his waist. So, now that that is done, what is this thing? There we go. That's done. Let's go ahead and move on to our silver. And I'm going to go ahead and start with the, uh, the parts that are going to be heavily painted silver. So, what that is, is uh, on this arm, the laser blaster, that's pretty much going to be everything in the back here is going to be painted silver. And then also along the uh, this cross support, along the barrels, there are a few joints, one on either end and one in the middle, as well as uh, rotation support right here. That's also going to be straight up silver. Everything else is going to be uh, dry brush silver over the black, so it's, you know, shiny black basically. 
Uh, and then on this hand, we're going to do the same thing with uh, the back end of the barrel here. And, well, pretty much everything except for, like, uh, there's an interior part of the barrels that you can see here that are not going to be uh, straight up silver. So, and this is also going to take a couple coats as well, so we'll see if I have to stop or anything like Well, actually, I'll start doing the dry brushing in there as well since, well, I need to anyway, so. Let's go ahead and get started with our silver. I don't know about you guys, but I am about ready to be done with this guy. And we almost are. So, uh, the last thing we were doing is getting all the, uh, the silver and the black pieces done. And we've got all the silver done. Body is all set to go. All that's left now is to shade in these solid silver parts on the weapon, so that's what we're going to do, and it's not even going to take very long, so I'm not even going to bother with doing the time lapse this time. Let's see, I'll go ahead and do these little bits on the fist first. The uh, plasma flamer, if you will. One of the cool things about uh, custodies is they're they're all about uh, exotic weapons. I will know that that's that's not really true. Maybe um, uh, what should we call it? Exotic genetics, I guess. Since they're they're basically like extra superhuman. All right, fist is down and attached. And now, for the grand finale, it's the last blaster pieces. Get a little bit of shade on these guys. Or this guy, I should say. Now for the big ammo charge pack. We are almost there. Just about. Just about. And maybe I should have time lapsed this since it's such a big surface, but 
That's fine. Especially since I'm obviously doing it in real time for me. All right. Take everything. Yes. And there you have it. That is one custodes Telemon Dreadnought all finished. Nice pretty big boy. And, you know, a simple scheme, more or less. Obviously these guys are, uh, as I mentioned before, you know, it's a different approach than I would normally take on my own models, but, you know, I'm doing this for someone else and got to do what the customer wants. That's all that matters. So, thank you again for another tuning into another episode of the of the paint booth. Uh, if you like this episode's here, there we go. There's the big guy. Maybe. Close enough. All right, this is never. Oh, there it was. So yeah, if you liked, uh... okay, it's always gonna be super lit. <laughs> Sorry. If you liked, uh... if you liked this episode, you know I got a bunch of other videos or a bunch of previous episodes, and of course, you know, like and subscribe, uh, leave a comment, check out future episodes if you stay subscribed, and if you want to see more of me in general, also. Uh, Go to my other YouTube channel here, Jankity S Podcast. It's not 40K related. It's just, you know, me and whatever I feel like talking about. And, uh, yeah, like and subscribe there or anywhere or wherever else you get uh, podcasts, especially iTunes mainly. Like and subscribe there. Find me on Instagram at jankity.ass.podcast. And, you know, Thanks again.